That as Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu says, he says, I've never known someone more knowledgeable than her in a verse of the Quran. Nobody could come close. Nor in the laws of inheritance, nor in any practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we today call the sunnah, nor in poetry, nor in narrations and knowing exactly who uttered what and when they said it in the presence of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as historical events that occurred and at the same time laws and regulations that were passed I knew no one who knew more than her so much so that she was the most knowledgeable of us even in medicine until she became known as the most knowledgeable from amongst all the women she knew absolutely everything she only lived with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for eight years and five months that's it and actually she had that special relationship with the Prophet she was the spoiled wife of the Prophet because of her character that one day they were coming back from one of the battles so the Prophet he ordered the army to go before him and he said behind with Aisha he said yeah Aisha would you like to race me Aisha said yes so Aisha and the Prophet they had the foot race and Aisha عنها, at that time she was young so she beat the Prophet a short time of years after the Prophet and Aisha had another foot race. But this time Aisha she said, I was a bit older and have put on more weight. So the Prophet beat me. So at the end of the race, the Prophet came and he hit his shoulder on my shoulder and he said, Now we are equal. You beat me the first time, now I beat you the second time. The greatest in honor and rank. The one whom the Prophet ﷺ declared that he loved her the most, none other than Aisha binti Abi Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anha, who is known as Ummul Mu'minin, the mother of the believers radiallahu anha. Grew up in a perfect household. Her father is the great companion Abu Bakr, and her mother is Umm Ruman bint Amr. Aisha says about herself, I became aware on things in this dunya and this life, when I opened my eyes to this dunya, I found my parents worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the religion of Islam. And Abu Bakr radiallahu is one of the few companions that never worshiped an idol in his life. So you can imagine the good upbringing, the way Abu Bakr radiallahu raised her up. She was born in the fifth year of Bi'tha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got engaged to her when she was six years old. And he married her after the migration to Medina and he consummated that marriage when she was nine years old. She was asked later on when she was old about her marriage. So she said, oh, I was fixed up to him in the sense that, you know, at that time, Subhanallah, the age of majority was about nine. That was the age of majority. Don't pick on people of the past just because your culture is different. It was the norm at the time. He married her not with his own choice, with the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was because as a young person, she would be able to memorize, live in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam much longer. She lived in his home. She was the most loved by him, a woman whom the bulk of the deen has come to us through her. She was the one who narrated the most hadith without a dispute from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from amongst the women. She knew much more than anyone else because she lived with him as a spouse. Certain things that only she knew how he lived and how he was intimate with his own family members and so on. Only she knew she related to us. And this is why those who want to destroy the ummah find fault in Aisha radiallahu anha. Once you dislike her, you discount her narrations, you've discounted half of the deen. Another man they would discount is Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Once you find discount him, you've almost entered the destruction of the entire deen. So this is why be careful of those who utter such dirty words against the creme de la creme, subhanallah. The household 
of Aisha radiallahu anha and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest example of how the love between the husband and the wife should be. Aisha radiallahu anha lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a small room that was attached to Al-Masjid al-Nabawi. That she says when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing his ihtikaf, he will stick his head out into my room so I can fix his hair for him. And sometimes I will pass things onto him from my room to, to the masjid. Aisha says about the condition of her house that 40 days used to pass and not even a lamp or fire or anything will be even lit in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning they didn't even have anything to cook and they didn't even have any oil to light the lamp. They used to live on dates and water. She had pink cheeks and she was pink in color and she blushed very quickly and he used to tease her by calling her Humaira and he used to make her laugh and he used to make her blush when he used to drink and this was narrated to us subhanallah by Aisha radiallahu anha when he used to drink from the utensil he made sure that she drank and then he looked for the position where her lips were and he drank from the same place whilst watching her blush subhanallah she ate from a piece of meat he would make sure that he let her eat then he would take it from her and look for the place where she bit and whilst looking at her would bite from the same place making her blush radiyallahu anha how can we say a word against her aisha radiyallahu anha the greatest of the women the one from paradise the one whom muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved the most aisha radiyallahu anha one day a group of abyssinians in the day of eid they were playing in the masjid and they were playing with the spears so Aisha radiallahu anha, she wanted to watch. So she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to carry her so she can watch. And she was watching the Abyssinians playing in the masjid. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Aisha, Ya Aisha, have you had enough? She said, no. Then he asked her again, Ya Aisha, have you had enough? She said, no. Then he said, Ya Aisha, have you had enough? She said, no. Aisha said, I had enough from the first time he asked me. But I wanted to see how much he loves me and how much he will be holding me for. Aisha radiallahu anha was one day arguing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And as she was arguing with him, she started to raise her voice. So who heard her? Her father Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr radiallahu he came inside the house, he was very angry. How can she raise her voice? So Aisha radiallahu anha, while she was screaming at the Prophet, she went and she hid behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi held Abu Bakr. So when Abu Bakr left, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said to Aisha, "What do you think of me now that I protected you from that man?" Referring to her father. So Abu Bakr came after, came short while after, and he heard Aisha radiallahu anha and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam laughing with each other. So he said, "The same way you got me involved in your problem, get me involved in your good time and your fun time." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said to Aisha, "Ya Aisha, but Allah, I know the times you are pleased with me." And I know the times you are angry with me, even if you do not say it. She said, Ya Rasulullah, how do you know that? He said, when you're angry with me, you say, by the Lord of Ibrahim. And when you are pleased with me, you say, you say, wa Rabbi Muhammad. She said, Ya Rasulullah, maybe I do not mention you on my tongue. But Ya Rasulullah, you are always in my heart. She loved the Prophet ﷺ with passion. And a group of the Jews, they walked past the Prophet ﷺ. And instead of giving salam to the Prophet, what did the Jews say? As-salamu alaykum. It means, poison be upon you. So the Prophet sallallahu he said, wa alaykum. And he said, same to you. But Aisha was angry. She said, may you be poisoned and may Allah curse you as well. So the Prophet sallallahu said, ya Aisha, do not treat them the same way. The Prophet sallallahu was tested with hardships. And Aisha, as one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she also had to be tested with hardships. And in the fifth year of Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ took Aisha with him to one of the battles. And that time it was the turn of Aisha to go with him. And it was the battle of Bani al mustaliq Which was an easy victory for the Muslims. And Ibn Ubay, he knew it would be a victory. So he joined the army to go and fight. Now on the way back, from this campaign, Aisha radiallahu anha, when they stopped for a rest break, she lost her necklace. And this necklace was a gift to her by the Prophet sallam, so it had a lot of sentimental value. And she began to look for it, and in trying to look for it, 
lot of time was spent. Everyone got up to leave. And she didn't realize, but everyone had left. Now they would take Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in what they call a hodaj. A hodaj is like a cart. She said the reason why they didn't realize that I was missing, even though they were supposed to be carrying me in the cart, is because back then we were very light. We never used to have much meat on our bones. So what happened is that she got left behind. Now she didn't panic. Because in those days they used to have something called a rear guard. In case someone got lost or things went missing. So she knew that there was someone that would come to find her. So she said that uh, there was a tree and there was some shade and I, I went to sleep. And then she said, I awoke to the sound of a man making istirja. Now the man who said this was that rare god. His name is Safwan ibn Mu'attal. He was shocked and here he finds Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so when he says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, she wakes up, she sees him, and she realizes that this is that rare God. And what happens is that he doesn't say anything. She mounts the horse, and they go back, and they catch up with the rest of the army. And that was all that happened. However, in the meanwhile, what happened in the Muslim army is that an argument broke out while some Muslims were getting water from a well. And this happened between the Muhajirun and the Ansar. Ibn Ubay, what he did, he, he saw an opportunity to try and stir something. And when he said what he said, news got to the Prophet wasallam that Ibn Ubay has said such and such. He basically, he likened the Muhajirun to being dogs. And what he meant by that, subhanAllah, so evil, is that these Muhajirun, they came all the way to Medina, we gave them money, accommodation, shelter, and now look what they're doing. They are biting us. So when this got back to the Prophet wasallam, he called for Ibn Ubay and he said, did you say such things? He said, I would never say something like this. Yes, I am a believer in you, Ya Rasulullah. Okay, I'm one of your companions. And then Allah Jalla wa revealed Surat Al-Munafiqun. He became exposed. And when he became exposed, he became humiliated. So what he did is he went to the back of the army as they made their way back to Medina. So he's frustrated, he's humiliated, and at that moment, who comes in the distance in the back? Two people, Aisha and Safwan, innocently making their way back. Now what does Ibn Ubay al-Khabith do? He sees them coming and he says, well, 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 what do we have here? He begins to insinuate. He doesn't say anything, but he doesn't need to. He just needs to say, well, 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 what's going on here? And then people start to think, oh, what's going on here? She's come back here alone and she's with Safwan and with the Prophet Sallam. And... However, no one says anything. Then they come back to Medina. And in Medina, this man, Ibn Ubay, he starts to make a full blown rumor about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now what happens subhanallah is that when they came back Allah decreed that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she falls ill and not just a little bit ill she fell very ill and she said for one month I was bed bound and she said I didn't know what was going on whatsoever. During that month this rumor that was started by Ibn Ubay it began to spread and subhanallah some genuine Muslims, they became careless. And when they heard the rumor, some believers, they actually entertained the rumor and passed it on. But there were some other believers, subhanAllah, like Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. When he heard the rumor, not only did he not accept it, he called it an outright lie. She says, during this month, I don't know what's going on. People spreading all of these lies about me. I had no idea, except for one thing. And that is when the Prophet ﷺ used to come and visit me, that he wouldn't give me the same type of love he would normally show me. And she had a nurse who would look after her because she was very sick. He would come and he would say, he would give salam to her. And then he would turn to the nurse and say, how is this one? He wouldn't talk to her. And she thought, that was strange. How comes? 
She says, after a month, I started to feel better. And so I went out one day and to a quite remote place, she went to relieve herself. Who was helping her was a lady called Um Mistah. As she's walking along, what happens is Um Mistah, she trips up on her dress and as she falls over, she says, Cursed be my son Mistah. So Aisha radiallahu she says, you know, what are you doing cursing a man who went to Badr with the processor? She says, don't you know what people have been saying? And she's like, what do you mean what people have been saying? Aisha said, I went straight to my mother. She says, oh my mother, what have people been saying? Her mother, she begins to reassure her. And all she says is, you know what? You are loved by the Prophet more than any other wife. You've got nothing to be worried about. Now when she says that to her, she becomes even more worried. What do you mean? He doesn't love me anymore. What's going on? And I said, Subhanallah. She said, have people been speaking about this? She couldn't believe it. She says, I began to cry. And I cried the whole night and the tears just wouldn't stop until I woke up in the morning. Then things went from bad to worse. She says the Prophet ﷺ, he called Ali and Usama bin Zayd to speak to them and get their advice. What should I do, he said to the two of them. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he said to the Prophet ﷺ, it's up to you. Allah has not made you obliged to stay with her. However, I recommend that you ask this one Jariya. There was a slave girl that was also looking after Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. He said, go and ask her if she has seen anything suspicious. He, he calls this girl. He's, and this, this uh, Jariya's name was uh, Barira. So he calls this girl Barira and he says to her, Oh Barira, have you seen anything suspicious about Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha? And her answer is just amazing. She says, no, I haven't seen anything whatsoever, except for one thing. That she is a very young girl, a bit immature. And when she's kneading the dough for the bread, she falls asleep. And when she does, the girl comes along and takes the bread. That's about it. <laughs> so far away from this allegation is unbelievable. So the Prophet ﷺ, what he does is the next day, he goes out, he stands at the mimbar in his masjid and he does a khutbah. He says, Muslims, who is going to deal with this man? Ibn Ubay. Because this man, he has caused so much grief to my family. He says, I swear by God, I don't know anything except good about my family. You see, he doesn't doubt his wife. And he said, in all of this, they've brought into disrepute another man as well, Safwan. And I don't know anything but good about Safwan. And he asked in that speech someone to take out Ibn Ubay for what he did. Now what happens, subhanAllah, is that instead of the matter being dealt with, the matter gets out of hand. And everyone is arguing. So the person began to tell people to calm down, calm down. And to everyone became quiet. And the person himself became quiet. He didn't know what to say anymore. And then Aisha, she says, I began to cry even more. She says, I cried for two nights and another day. And the tears just wouldn't stop. She's thinking, look at what's happening now. Everyone is at each other's throats because of me. She says, and my mom and dad, they thought that I'm crying so much, my liver is going to explode. And she can't stop crying because of this. And then what happens, the Prophet ﷺ, he comes to visit her. She says he came in, he sat next to me, and the first thing he does, he says, La ilaha illallah. Things have reached me about you, about this and that. And then he says, if you are innocent, then don't worry, Allah, he will declare your innocence. And he says, if you have even dabbled in some type of sin, then you know what? Ask Allah to forgive you and make tawbah to him. Now at that moment, Aisha's sadness turns to anger. She becomes enraged. 
She looks at her father and she says, respond to the Prophet I'm not even going to speak to him now. You tell him. Abu Bakr says, I don't know what to say. SubhanAllah. Then she looks at her mother, she says, Mom, what are you going to say? Her mom says, I don't know what to say. She said, I swear by Allah. I know that you have heard the hadith, meaning the rumor, until it's gone right inside of you. And you started to believe it. She said, I don't know that if I tell you I didn't do it, and Allah knows I didn't do it, you wouldn't believe me. And if I suggest that I did do something and Allah knows I had nothing to do with it, you would immediately believe me. SubhanAllah. And then she said, there's no way I can describe you guys right now except the way the father of Yusuf said the following words. Beautiful patience is all I'm going to have. And I'm going to rely on Allah about what you people are saying. SubhanAllah. That is what Aisha said to those three people in the room at that moment. You are like right now to me, like the brothers of Yusuf But it just shows how much he was affected by what happened. And she says, I crawled up into a little ball and I lay down on my bed. The Prophet ﷺ, he goes into another room and he sits down and he falls into that trance, that moment where revelation starts to come down and he begins to sweat. Aisha said, beads of sweat started to drop from his face and revelation begins to come down. Allah said, Indeed, those who came with the if don't think of it as something bad, rather it was better for you. Now when the Prophet he received that revelation, he smiled and he called out, Ya Aisha! So Aisha said, my mom, my mom says to me, go on and speak to him, look. She says, no, I'm not going to speak to him. She said, when I heard the Prophet calling me, and I could tell that he was laughing. The first thing he said after laughing was, Oh Aisha, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has declared that you are innocent. So she said, Mom, go, go speak to him. Go speak to him for me. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to go and speak to him. Her mom said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go stand in front of him. You're supposed to go and stand in front of him. She said, I'm not going to give credit to anyone except Allah. She says, the one who was killed, may he be killed all over again. She's angry and she's speaking about the wretched individual who was responsible for beginning the rumor in the first place. Abdullah ibn Ubay. He was said to be the head of the hypocrites. Ten verses of Quran to declare the innocence of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And from that day, until Yawm Al Qiyamah, mankind will learn about the honor of our mother through those verses inside Surah An Nur. Aisha radiallahu anha, she lived her life with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was until that moment, the hardest moment in the life of the Muslims, in the life of the believers, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became very ill, very sick in the eleventh year of Hijrah and he never recovered. So Aisha she, she, she was describing the last moments of the life of the Prophet She said, the Prophet had his head on my chest and my brother Abdul Rahman walked inside my house and he had the siwak in his mouth. And the Prophet looked at the miswak or the siwak in the hand of my brother Abdul Rahman. So I knew that the Prophet wanted the miswak. So I took the miswak from Abdul Rahman and I have put the miswak in my mouth. And then to make it softer, and I gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cleaned his mouth, cleaned his teeth with the siwak. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam put his head on my chest, and I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam raising his hand to the heavens and saying, "Bala rafiq al-a'la, bala rafiq al-a'la." I knew the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that moment, at that time, he was given the choice to stay in this life or for Allah subhanahu wa taala to take to take his soul. Aisha she said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away and his head was between my chest and my neck, sallallahu alayhi Muhammad. After the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, 
Aisha stayed in Medina. And the companions used to always go back to her, asking her to explain hadith to them, asking her to give them rulings. When the companions عنهم, would disagree between each other over rulings, they would go to Aisha to make the judgment. Aisha radiallahu anha passed away on the 17th day of Ramadan in the 85th year of Hijrah. 